Hi everybody. Oh, it's a cold, crisp morning up in the loft. Um, I just thought I'd do you a quick video on my version of a track laying on my railway. Um, I'm, I'm no expert on track laying and I've only learned through watching a couple of videos and muddling along my own way. Uh, so I'm just going to talk you through how I lay the track and what tools I use. Um, we had a hard day laying loads of track yesterday. So I thought I'd do you a quick video on little things I've picked up as I've gone along. So, I use, for under the track, um, I use a mixture of, uh, I had a load of cork road bed and if you can see that black stuff there i picked up some foam which is more modern the track uh foam track bed because it's more of a um, it's more forgiving when you're doing the, the bends and it's a little bit more sound absorbing um as you can see i use a mixture of um chipboard and hardboard plywood from a road bed and i know you can get um, the more professional, um, proper wood for, for modelling on the tables. I think it's softer. Um, but I was using long lengths of flooring, which I had uh, left over from job downstairs. And as I'm working on a budget, and I'm in the UK and things aren't as readily available here as they are like in the States um, for this sort of thing. So, um, well, let's just talk through it. Now, the tools I use you can see there, I've got a this is what I use for drilling. I think it's called a pin. I can't, I can't remember the proper name of it. Pin vice, I think that's what it's called. So, you've got uh, an interchangeable head there. Uh, your drill bit sizes that's for drilling your track ties sleepers now the reason i pin my track down rather than gluing it um i do have to glue it if i'm doing it up on a bit of scenery or something like that um but if you want to change your, your track you can lift your pins and reuse the track where well, once it's glued down that's knackered really because you can't get it back up again without ripping all the um the back plastic ties off so that's my for drilling my sleepers track cutters now these I'm sure when I bought these they said they come with a lifetime guarantee um, they're pretty good they do leave a burr so you need a file just to take the um, the, the burr off the bottom because you can't get your rail joiners on um, and you need to try and cut as tight in there rather than right on the ends. It's not too bad for doing end gauge in scale. Um, but when I know my dad was cutting a double O track and he was cutting it down and he was just using the end, he did shear one of the jaws off. So bear that in mind. Um, and another set of cutters, but this isn't for the track. This is These are wire cutters and I use them for pulling the um, the rail joiners on and off if they're in the wrong position and for levering up the pins if I've cut something too short um, track cleaner if you've got some old points or old bit of track you need to bring back from the dead um, a nice modelling knife for cutting cutting the sleepers back and for cutting if you're on the joints I'll explain in a minute. You use them for cutting the ties off so the rail joiners slip under the end. I'll show you that in a second. And a good pin hammer. Now you need to make sure you've got one that the head is on properly so it doesn't come flying off and land on one of your best trains. So you need a flat head for bringing the, the nails down to the level of the track and then the other end working in between the tracks and when you're banging them in um, I use 
if you can see in the pot here I've got several different types of nails the really thin ones are the in gauge nails in scale but they um, unless you're using that proper board they're too thin to get into chipboard they just bend but they're good for using on your scenery if you're putting track up on the on the hillside where you've already done your scenery and you're pushing it into cardboard or something like that now i've got the same length as that but slightly thicker and um, some short nails so when you come off of your road bed like here i've had to use the very short nails because you can't get them all the way in they start to bend over and when you're banging it in um rather than going for one massive big hit and whacking it straight in if you use lots of small hits to penetrate the surface now i fell into the trap of using um up here i use some plywood and over on my scenery for the the thin sections that are going up um, especially over on the far corner over there where i cut a big circle i cut a circle out of hardboard um, and over the back here trying to penetrate that hardboard with these nails is near on impossible so if you can when you're drilling your ties if you put your you drill a little bit longer so you can go through the tie and through that hard surface of your plywood or your hardboard to give the nails half a chance of going in because it's ne near impossible but if you can do it with lots of little hits it slowly penetrates and then it goes through because if you use a big hit it just bends the the pins the track pins um also make sure you've got enough rail joiners um, fish plates we call them here over in England um, because you use quite a lot and quite a lot of them bend when you're putting them on so that, that's the tools now as for um, when you're actually fitting these these um, tracks down so if you can pre-position and glue your track bed in position first it's hell of a lot easier than trying to do it because it moves all the time so you get your track bed in exactly where you want your track to run um, you the beauty of this is you can put it on the center of your sleeper put your finger on top and you spin that to drill away um, now I drill them because if you try and nail them without drilling them nine times out of ten um, everything is so bloody small the pin either bursts through the side or it splits the tie so if you pre-drill it two reasons you can pop your pin in there and it holds it vertical so you can hammer it in um, and because when you're drilling you're obviously drilling the top surface of that wood like I mentioned earlier and when you're hammering them down, only try and dress them in so they're, if I don't know if you can see that there, it needs to be up a little bit and not distorting the plastic tie because um, it starts to pull it off the track once it distorts and you're never going to have a flat track um, if you're distorting the ties. Right, the next thing I'm going to move on to is cutting the track. Now, I'm just trying to get the phone set up. It's my lunch over there because I'm on a diet. And um, right, with this flexi track, um, if you can see there, when you move it to make your curves, you can see the rail does move along and um, you don't get a flat edge. So if you can get your track, when you've got a long meter length of track and you're doing a couple of curves, if you can pre-position the track, lay it on the track and put a couple of weights along it so you can hold it in the position. So it gives you the rough end of where you're going to cut to try and get it flat. It's not easy, but if you can, if you can get that done, old track tends to, the plastic's hardened a little bit and it holds its shape a little bit better. Um, I've got quite a bit of old track I bought, but uh, 
the, the new track is really flexible and it's quite hard because you want to try and get your track joints as tight as possible especially with that in engage um because the um the wheels are just so small you will get derailments on these big steam engines like i do with the with the morning daylight the tender is a bloody nightmare and you've got to try and get the track so once you get your track down um if you're getting derailments you'll find it's either your track bed isn't quite flat and you've got a little bit of distortion in the track and that's enough to derail or um, it's twisted left to right. Now you get more of that on the points. So once you get your track in position, then you can start fine tuning by putting little wedges in to get the track flat to stop your derailments. And you need to really concentrate on doing lots of that before you start doing your scenery. I'm still having trouble over the far side where I've got the transition from the bridge onto the curve. There's a bit of track distortion there and the six wheel trucks on the um, the morning daylight, the bogey is um, the leading wheel will derail all the time. All the other trains are fine. Um, now the other thing I mentioned earlier, move this out of the way, is what you need to do let me just put my glasses on, I can't see what I'm doing. Is if you can just see on the on the edge of the track there, I don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna focus. You've got a little rail tie, and when you push your your rail joiner in there, it hits that. You can't get it in there. So you can either cut it from the side. And I just try and do it here without cutting my fingers off. Yeah, I find it if you can just put the edge of the blade up against the bottom of the track and you can just slide that in there and you can see the see the knife slide through there so if you see the blade goes in there then you, when you slide your rail joiner on it slides underneath there and you don't end up with a massive gap on your rail joints um, and when you put these fish plates on, you do get different sizes of these. Normally the bigger ones are for the for the points. Um, they are bloody tricky to get on. And as you're getting older, you're getting harder and harder. Now when you cut, I think this is a cut bit of track, it will get a little burr just on the bottom edge. So if you clean all that off, try and do this before, try and do both ends of the track, because once you've got the track nailed on and you start manipulating the other end of the track, these ties, they start to pull off and it ruins your, the um, the look of your track. Once the, um, the track, you see how hard to pick these things up. Once the track gets detached, from the um, the plastic tires. Bloody hell! Right. Now, when you when you get your fish plate on there, it is nice if you have got a sort of a burr there, because it's at least you know at one side of the track the fish plate is nice and tight now what you want to try and do I, i'm not teaching you to suck eggs yeah but um you need to get try and get your fish plate so you're on it 50 50. now when you push it onto the other piece of track it will always take the path of least resistance so if it's loose on a bit of track it will slide on and you only get a tiny bit of engagement don't think, oh, that'll do. Try and pull that bit off, stick it on the other bit of track and try and get them in so you've got 50-50 engagement on both sides. And you really need to check. Now, I've just, I've tr I put all that track down yesterday and I've just run my finger along and one of the bits of track wasn't engaged in the fish plate. And it's tricky because this um, flexi track, it starts to distort. And if it tips over and the, the engagement is so small, you can you can miss it doesn't slide in and then you've got it all pinned down and then you're in the ship so just take a little bit of time to get those fish plates on 
and get them engaging 50 50 because um where you've got your wires for your your dcc or your analog track um the better as the power is going along i know on the dcc you've got your droppers going all the way along but every now and again you might have a bit of track which hasn't got any power on and this is where the power is picked up for the track um, so that's your fist plates your flexi track cutting try and get your joints as tight as possible but um, as level as possible but it depends when you're laying the track now I'm I'm laying it in this morning up here it was below zero uh, we're not in here but it's really cold and you do get a lot of contraction and expansion in the track like you do on a real railway and in the summer when it's really hot up here if your joints are really tight and you've laid them in the winter you'll get track buckling in the summer so make sure you just leave a little clearance gap not massive but enough um to allow for the summer try your best to get your best joint you can um because if if you've got big gaps you will pay for it with derailment um with some of your trucks so what have i covered i've covered the fish plates i've covered cutting the track I've covered the road bed. Now they do make a little machine when it comes to the whole point of putting road bed on your track is if you look at a main line train track, the, it is really quite high up the pile of shingle they put the track on. And they make a little machine that you can fill full of gravel and you just you just go along and it this will be another video I do and um it dispenses the gravel perfectly. And when you've got all the gravel on you can soak it in PVA glue and it sticks like shit to a blanket. And then you've got it on. Um, it's set. So that's the whole point of putting the road bed on is for the, for the look and for the sound deadening. Because on chipboard, it's quite noisy, the train's rattling around. And it sort of detracts from the, um, the niceness of all the scenery and all that crap. Anyway. So what have, we, what have we done? We've laid we've laid all this track in here for the dock side. We're gonna have a nice crane here. Um I've put the outer rail all the way around because I changed the idea because I didn't have enough room because these American trains are so long. We've got a, 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 a double track running right round and a point over here. Um so we can hold the trains before they go over the big bridge, Logan's crack. Um, stuck that my 3d printed bridge together yesterday so it's all one piece i'm just going to work on this joint section here but i don't know whether i'm going to make that permanent yet because i need to do the scenery behind it anyway so that's just a video on track laying uh, any questions about tools i'll tell you i was just going to show you before i sign off this pin vice let me just show you this um now, this end unscrews here. And it gives you the option. Let me just get that. Let me drill that. It gives you the option. Small drill. Hold on. Small drill bit. Big drill bit. And I thought to myself, well, what if you want one in between? So when I was working on my tank and I needed a different size drill bit, I wondered if you could buy, you had to buy a, a multi-pack of these things. And then just by pure luck, um, because this end rotates, because when you've got it on your finger, you're cutting, you're drilling like that. This end came loose. And I never noticed in the end here, there's another bit with two more sizes of vice. So if you bought one of these, it's a lot easier doing it with this than trying to do it with an electric drill because everything's so tiny. Um, that just clamps up in there. Pin vice. That's, it's worth the money and buying a little pack of multi-sized drill bits to go with that. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. Any questions? Let me know. Cheers, bye.